with Kobe for a post-game interview with Cloud9's Jungler. Thank you, Dom. Yes, I'm here with Medios, the victorious jungler, after that really intense set uh, for Cloud9. Now, Medios, haven't really talked to you in a long time. You know, you took a break from the LCS for a while, did some streaming, a little bit more relaxing. How does it feel to be back on stage in these tense, really long 65-minute Baron versus base race games? Uh, do you enjoy the competition? Oh, I love it. Um, it's definitely a lot more stressful than the streamer life, but <laughs> It's also really satisfying, and I enjoy competing a lot. Yeah, uh, kind of in that vein, you know, how has your team sort of changed over this split? You know, you guys brought in Reaper, who's going to help with communication or team play. Have you guys grown together? I think we have grown together a decent amount. You know, I think in the beginning, we may have played a bit better than now, but it was one of those situations where we didn't always know why we were winning. And sort of in our quest to understand the game better, we've had to like backtrack a bit to get us ourselves on the same page. But it does feel like we're moving forward. Definitely some success in that quest uh, today. Now, it continues tomorrow, though, because match of the week is going to be you guys versus CLG. Um, CLG have had a pretty rough start to this split. But how do you see that team right now? I think CLG is on an upward trend because they did have a rough start, but they almost beat Immortal super close yesterday. So we're not going to underestimate or anything. I think it'll be a really tough match. Anything specifically you're looking to exploit in CLG? Have you identified any uh, weaknesses? Well, it looks like they play around top a lot, so maybe we can do something there. All right. Well, keep your eyes on top lane tomorrow, guys. Uh, right now, though, we're going to send it back to the analyst desk to have them close out the day. Thank you very much, Kobe. C9 in half the amount of time it took him to win game two close out game three to get the series victory over Apex. And this was just, this was a wild series because of its, you know, dips and valleys and weird twists Buck and turns. Wild. And yeah, it was absolutely insane, right? And it definitely did feel a bit like Apex. We were questioning men mentality moving into game three. Did feel like they fell apart a little bit in terms of uh, their mental state in that third game. Well, I hate to say it, but when it really came down to that final player on Baron, it was a throw. Yeah. Uh, it's no other way to put it. It was yeah. just a, not a good call. I mean, it even starts even, even the draft a little bit. They they take the Fiora super early. They don't right. see the other top laner. The, they can pick. It was second rotation. The enemy team still has you know other picks to react to. It just seemed very early for the Fiora when you can take the victor there and That's... save the Fiora for the counter pick. And it was. It just seemed like the kind of thing where it's like, I want to play Fiora, let's take right. it here. And yeah, I think that's what the odd thing was. Then you then pick Victor in your third rotation. Well, you could have just taken that second. You could it's take Victor The counter pick Victor. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> oh Victor yeah. is here. I know, Crumbs, you were saying that instead you would have liked to have seen then the Nar come in. If yeah. the Victor's pick second, maybe a Nar. Yeah, you get, you get your Nar into the Shen, and you have a lot more pressure around the team fight, which is what these games have come down to, just the team fighting, especially around the Baron. We saw the win on game one, a lot of involvement with the Baron, the objective game in game two, and mm -hmm. then game three, it came down to Baron once again, whereas if you had a Nar and were a little bit more focused on getting that fight as opposed to having the Fiora who brings zero to a team fight, things could have looked different. Now, the thing that I had, or that you had told me when I asked you what do you want to see in game three was lane swap and slowing things down. That's exactly what we got. So we definitely did have a much slower paced early game for these two teams, and it took a little while for C9 to really develop their lead. However, they were securing those mountain drakes along the way, which would play into their ability to, one, take uh, take that Baron and then run through the base. Right, I think it was the kind of thing where it could have gone better for them. They, they were able to pick off Ray a lot, and they were trading top lane farm for bot lane farm, so Sneaky was ahead, but Ray was ahead in the other team. And then their, their Rift Herald didn't really work out, where uh, <laughs> Shrimp just kind of like walked up and, and got it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a little weird. Well, they basically five-man, because Jensen was on the way there, so yeah. they started as a four-man, you know it's not going to work. Yeah, I know how much if, you like your five-man. If he was Rift there, Herald. they probably would have been wiped. Yeah, but uh, it, it was just the kind of thing where it was like a, a slow game, definitely favored for C9, but could have been a, a little cleaner, but, but pretty good overall. Well, and but then, as you mentioned, Apex did make a decision that, in a sense, through the game, it didn't need to end where it did. Now, that's not to say that Cloud9 couldn't have won the game on their own as it was, but I do want to pull up that 28-minute replay. Cloud9, Baron Steel, plus a sneaky quadra, man. He has had quite a day. Well, this all starts from getting a pick earlier onto Impact, and the call is so split because Impact goes towards the mid, or Ray. Ray goes to mid lane and starts pushing, whereas the other members just decide to do bearing, and you know that you don't even have a tank. Gragas doesn't have enough mana to survive this. There's no Alistar ulti, and immediately Cloud9 collapses and just cleans the house. Because mm -hmm. if you're not putting attention towards the Sivir and Azir in a choke out of all places, 
how do you win that? You <laughs> yeah. don't. I, it was the kind of thing that you and I were talking about where it's like, either call is fine. Well, not fine. You, you sh they shouldn't go for the Baron, but like it would look a little bit better if Ray hadn't like ran down mid first and like TP'd from Wraiths to Baron. When they, they were just all grouped up a second ago. Like he and used his TP to get to a Baron they were right next to after pushing. It was clearly not a good call like in concept as well as in like the fact that like people split up randomly. Yeah, ultimately it's better. A bad call can be made better if everybody commits to it. You yes. know, it's not going to happen that, as we're talking yeah. about. They're like, Ray, we're going to need you to push middle while we do better. Yeah, and, and, and then TP back in and you walk away from us. Like, I didn't understand why he had to TP. It was so weird. Yeah, questionable decision making there. And that's part of that mental breakdown that we're talking about. Best of threes are taxing. And at a certain point, that's where the communication can break down. Just the decision making in general can break down. So unfortunate for Apex there. Cloud9 was then able to make an easy chase down in the bottom lane we saw with the Sivir speed coupled with Karma speed. It's very hard to get away from this team. And so an easy pick off onto Keen in uh, the bot lane meant the end of the game. Sneaky's going to pick up player of the game, 8-0-7 on Sivir. 100% kill participation here. Again, we've talked about how it's not necessarily super difficult to get 100% uh, kill participation on the likes of Sivir. But a quadra kill here, had a penta, or, uh, had a penta kill the other week. Uh, and then on, on top of that, we had... Um, uh, Jensen's pensa kill as well today. So Cloud Nine rolling in the kills. Well, yeah. If you put if you put all the resources into one person, being able to really showcase that and use it effectively is showcase of a strong player. And he did just that. You could argue like, oh yeah, you know, he got all the resources. Of course he's going to do well. Well, that's exactly what his job is. If you get the resources, you deliver, and he does just that. Well, very much so. So Cloud Nine gets the victory today. They're going to go up against CLG tomorrow. We got a little bit of a sneak peek in terms of what Medios thinks. Maybe they'll focus the top lane. That's not too much information, but the likes of Darshan will see if he can pick up his play. Great day of LCS big plays here in North America. But when it comes to uh, today's biggest plays, we got to talk Cloud Nine. Rain Bunnies cried out. I stopped watching for one second, and Jensen gets a penta. Let's see that Jensen ace apex. Bullets are being fired across. Sneaky eats another spear. They chase forward, long range engage. As they Shrimp got the gets scooped back, Shrimp goes down, but Ray is in the back line. Sneaky is burning down. Will he be able to kite away with his life? He does. Jensen gets the double kill as the snare misses. There's the Eve Blazer on cooldown. I'm dead, I'm dead. Nice, 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 nice. Nice. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I have speed for you, Jensen. Get nice. him, Jensen. Get the Penta. Nice, Jensen. Nice, good job, good job. Let's go, dude. Wing him, man. I was at 30 minutes, and they said good game. Little did they know. Oh, Little did they know. <laughs> so wrong. The funniest That's thing is, I was watching how like, Special died, because I was like, wait, he's still alive, and like Jensen wasn't close. This one Voidling just like ran past everybody. Like, hero mission, like got one auto on a Special to finish him off. Don't worry, Jensen, buddy. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it was hilarious. I got gotcha. you. No, that's great. And that, uh, I think, I didn't, I missed that, that uh, the good game. Yeah, that's oh, hilarious. Man. Next what up, ride. Jensen wasn't done after that pen to appearing in yet another LCS big play alongside Sneaky. Lady Pole says, holy, that call by C9. Let's watch Jensen and Sneaky rush down Apex's Nexus. Jensen and, and Sneaky are going to go oh for this. Are they going to go for the steal? Are they going to base race? Yeah, the Elder Dragon is trying to be stolen Mito's away. Gonna try to steal. He's knocked up. Oh, but Couldn't the Elder Dragon going to be picked up. It is a base race. Oh, my God. They're, they're going for the down. They need to stop the base. Like this out as best they can. Distract, distract, yeah. distract. Just stop the just recalls. Cancel, recalls. Cancel, cancel recalls. Cancel recalls. Cancel recalls. Running. Cancel, running. We're ending. We're ending. We won. We got it. 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 Oh, oh my god! Cloud Nine beat Apex! 61 minutes in! I, ha I have to say the contrast between Dom's excitement and then the looks on the <laughs> players' faces yeah, as just, they realize they're like, oh my god, the game's over. Like 65 yeah, it's minutes. It's got to be in the game. It's like, all right. We tried Baron, didn't work. We tried Elder, didn't work. Can, can, can we can we just try win? Let's just take the next. Can we like, try yeah. the How about we try? <laughs> what if we just ran straight? You think that's like, hmm. <laughs> There's only one more direction to go. Yeah. Straight down the try middle. Try the left side, <laughs> try the right side. Let's go up the middle. I, I love it. It worked. It worked. And that was a, a what a way to end that game, too, which was so back and forth with so many Nobody could have traded. expected that. Right, exactly. So good on Cloud9 for having the wherewithal to make that decision, stop all the ports as they did. Now, though, it's time to see how the league stands following the completion of our games here today. TSM and Immortals stand atop the league in first and second place. Cloud9 and Liquid remain in their third place tie to round out the top four. Counter Logic Gaming and Team Envy are bunched up in the center of the standings, and these seven through 10 slots are occupied in order by Apex, Energy, Phoenix One, and Echo Fox. 
Now to check in on the upcoming LCS series hitting your screen tomorrow. You won't want to miss the NALCS 1 clash between Liquid and TSM, but make sure to tune in early for our match of the week. At noon Pacific, Cloud9 takes on Counterlogic Gaming in a critical late season match as both of these teams seek better seating in the upcoming summer playoffs. Gentlemen, thoughts on this initially because CLG actually did step up in a couple ways last night in their series, however, not necessarily getting the victory. Cloud9 here, this wasn't the prettiest of victories for them, 2-1 over Apex. The thing for me would be to watch mid lane. Who he has been playing a lot better recently. We saw him do well on Cassio as well as the Aurelian Soul. And Jensen looked surprisingly weak uh, mm -hmm. at parts in this series, especially game one where he was kind of getting solo killed by Keen. And so I think a lot of this matchup will obviously be decided around top lane, how Darshan's playing, but as well as how who he matches up versus Jensen. Because if we get the really strong Jensen who's playing really well, I think. CLG will struggle, but if, if Jensen's not on his best, we, we have a chance there for a mid lane. Oh, I think this game is going to be rather unmacroy, if, <laughs> if that's the word. I think we need to be, find the opposite yeah. word of macro. Oh, for macro. You. It's going to be Mi just micro. Well, not, not like, no, un, like un, a un, macro like game. Of macro. Yeah. Oh, just without macro. Yeah, just chaotic. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. That's, right. I anyway, continue your yeah, point. So the game is going <laughs> to be sorry rather. Sorry to bring us to a full stop. <laughs> rather focused on a lot of action, a lot of kills. And we see that both teams are really capable of just playing that game and not focusing too much on the objectives and that was kind of the hint of games two and game three with uh, CLG versus Immortals and obviously this entire game the series against Apex was mm -hmm. just rather bloody so I think that when they cr they clash there's gonna be reminiscence uh, or of the macro game that these guys have but ultimately as the series progresses it's gonna get bloodier and bloodier with just the strategy out the window and see who is ultimately the, the better micro players. I'm okay with that. Skirmishes are exciting. And, and and we did also mention, of course, that Team Liquid versus TSM game. That's a big one as well. Another third place team against a top tier team. So two big matches to be excited for as well as the rest that will hit your screens tomorrow. But now for myself, the casters, our guest analysts, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.